afternoon. Here we go, shucking oysters. Morena from Pohara Top 10 Holiday Park. Today we're going to have a look around for the Teo Repe, the humble Pacific rock oyster, because they're here. We just have to go find them, they're here. And it's just about low tide. <clears throat> well, today we're going to have a look at getting some rock oysters. Now you need a warm water place uh, to find them. Um, ideally, you know, you're talking about water temperatures of 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. That's basically where they uh, live. And of course, you're not going to find them on the sand. You need to find them on the rocks. I just want to say hi, oyster catchers. No need to run. The uh, toria there, that's the uh, oyster catcher in New Zealand. You see those birds everywhere. They, they basically go after shellfish, so you'll see them in places where there's oysters, but also where there's cockles as well. Uh, unless you're looking for the uh, dredge oyster uh, that lives on the sand in New Zealand, known as the, um, uh, the bluff oyster, they live in the colder water temperatures. Then you need to find them in the uh, warmer water. Oh. Here we go. Mm. Okay, in terms of tools, you are going to need tools to remove rock oysters from rocks. Now there's no right or wrong way to do this, uh, I have found a hammer works well combined with a oyster knife. That's the same oyster knife that you use to open up the oysters. Uh, and in this particular, on this particular occasion, I had I didn't have those. Um, Coco was using them, so I had a uh, bread knife with a, a little rock, and it didn't work very well. Now, in terms of health and safety, just be very careful. The oysters have uh, razor sharp shells. Absolutely nasty razor sharp shells. So be very careful, uh, wear gloves at a minimum, um, and you may want to wear even more protective gear, uh, depending on how you're gonna be maneuvering around the water. I think what are pretty tasty. Yeah, you don't taste them. Um, the salt, but uh, you've got the uh, fresh flavor. open them, rinse them in the icy water and cool them down a wee bit. Mm. Oh, so good. Mm. The icy water makes a difference. Be careful, there's a wee bit of shell on them. <laughs> yeah, that's why you need to rinse it. Yeah. I'm telling you. Oh, even after you rinse them, there's still a wee yeah, bit of yeah. shell in there. Because you're not rinsing properly. <laughs> <laughs> Just opening up some of our oysters from this afternoon. If you're going to do this, wear gloves. <laughs> so you jam the oyster knife at the back of the oyster. The flat part. These two oysters are kind of stuck together. <laughs> this one's got a, a sea lice thing on it. So this is the flat part of the oyster here. Jam our oyster knife in the back. And you sort of got to damage the shell a wee bit to get it in. Eventually you'll get it in and you can lift off that flat part. Got an oyster in there. This one 
should be relatively easy. You can identify where to open up the oyster. That's the back there. This is the flat part. Jam it in. This shouldn't be too hard. This one. There we go. You just break that part at the back. Pull that top part off. Sometimes you have to cut that adductor muscle there. Another oyster there. To be honest. Mm -hmm. I tried my best to get the meat out. At the oyster farms, when they sell these things, they actually declump them <laughs> so that you don't get this. Here we've got about three oysters all stuck together. One, two. Here's the third one. Difficult to tell where the back is on this one. Unfortunately, the bottom of the shell broke on this one. But, oh, we still got it. There we go. It's a bit of a small one. Look, the muscles open. <laughs> Not safely without stabbing myself in the hand anyway. Oh, there we go. Oh, you did it. Here we go. It was awkward because the shell is damaged on this one. So we've got this big one open. There we go. Shocking oysters.